I may as well just go ahead and finish that one other thing. The other thing is um, one of my many lives, because you know, I'll try some stuff when I need a little extra money, but I did estate sales for about three years and Joyce was an avid supporter of my estate sales. Anytime I had an estate sale, Joyce was there. Now, Joyce was not there to buy, but her sister Karen always <laughs> wanted to come to my, what did she call them, my garage sales. Had to keep telling her, baby, this is not a garage sale, this is an estate sale. And Karen also loves my pizza, so I make pizza for Karen periodically as well. So I have a love for Joyce and I have a love for Karen because she loves me as well. Okay, so Tamika? Yes, that, that was a much better introduction than I would have done anyway. Oh, really? Yes. Are you just saying that? No. Well, well let's get this show on the road. All right, let me get to share my screens. Hold on. You apologize for making us late first. I do apologize. You know, when you have, you have all these different computers and I went up screaming at the kids, help me, help me. And then he comes down and he's like, you're on the wrong computer. So I had to apologize to him first. Okay. So. Okay. Oh, let me just say this too. For all of you who don't know, Tamika is my daughter. So when I get a little sassy with her, um, it's because she's my baby. All right, y'all see my screen yet? Yeah, All right. put, it in, put it in present. Well, I was making sure they could see it first. <laughs> now look, don't you get tested with me. <laughs> All right, Miss Joyce, I am ready. Thank you, thank you. I am so excited uh, to be here. I'm, I did this last month and uh, a couple months ago and Liz wanted me to come back. And so I wanna thank you, Liz for having me, I appreciate it. And Liz uh, has a notary training workshop. And I tell you, if you're thinking about being a notary or you want a side business, that is a place to go for her training. I, I attended and I can tell you one thing, you can pass tests, you can go online and do everything, but sometimes you need to sit down in front of someone who is doing it. So they mm -hmm. explain to you exactly how everything uh, works so I don't know, but after I get up for here, uh, I'm going to mute everyone. Okay, okay, okay. So, thank but you. I'm wondering why this is still why? Uber Eats, they're the ones that have the drivers. Patricia, oh, yes, <laughs> we can hear you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. How does that remind you, Amika? <laughs> uh, Put yourself on mute. <laughs> she she took care of that for me before I could get to the mute off. <laughs> I didn't want her to say anything else. <laughs> I know <laughs> that was the I'm muted. I muted it. We I'm have muted. had those classes. <laughs> okay. All right. But anyway, thank you, Liz, and I and I really do. Uh, believe that if you're interested in being a notary, she has some excellent courses. She has training, uh, notary training 101 and 102. So um, very good resource to help you understand how that business works. Thank you. So, you're welcome. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about how I want you to, re you should respond during this period of COVID-19. You know, everybody um, is nervous uh, and <clears throat> you can't help be nervous. You know, things are happening today that, you know, in my lifetime, I've never experienced. So it's easy for everybody to want to panic. So I'm saying very first thing, don't panic. Um, you know, don't start running, doing things because you think this is what you need to do. Uh, just be calm. It's kind of hard to be calm, but um, very first thing you want to do is develop an emergency budget. You know, we spend a lot of money sometimes that we shouldn't spend, and I'm probably the number one person. I think that everything that I see, I need, <laughs> and not everything I see, I need. It is really just a want. And so a lot of times we just have to sit down 
and really see what are those needs that we have to manage, that we have to have. So very first thing, develop an emergency budget and sit down and then you can decide, you know, you have to pay all your shelter expenses, you know, your lights, water, gas, your mortgage, um, you know, those are your priorities. And so you have to look at some of the other things. So when you uh, uh, contact, contact all of your creditors, uh, if you're in a situation in which you know you're gonna, you don't have, after you've done your budget, you know you don't have enough money, uh, contact the creditors. You know, if they send you a letter in the mail, open the mail. Uh, we've had too many instances when I was at Dallas County Home Loan Counseling Center when people didn't open the mail. They came into our office for us to open it for them. And usually by the time we opened up the mail, it was too late. Because a lot of times creditors will try to work with you. And right now, because this is affecting so many people, you know, they're willing to, to work with you. So just know that you should contact your creditors, let them know your situation, find out what is available that <coughs> they can help you with. And then uh, next, just think outside the block, uh, the box and kind of explore any other options, you know, that you may have. You know, <clears throat> I've uh, seen on the uh, internet and on TV where people thought, oh, I've lost my job and they've gone out and been able to get a better job. So, you know, maybe in your situation, you know, the position that you've been in, you know, maybe this is just a blessing in disguise for you to move, you know, to something, you know, that's a little bit better. So just see what other things you can do. You know, contact uh, your uh, family members. Uh, talk to other people. You know, search online. Uh, go to the government websites and see what they have available. There's just a lot of options out there for you. So you just kind of think outside the box. And one thing about everyone going through a situation like that is that all the creditors, they understand. So it's not like uh, you, <clears throat> you're calling up and say, well, you know, I want you to help me because I didn't pay. And they're like, why didn't you pay? Well, I had to get my car fixed. Well, getting your car fixed, you know, is not an emergency. You know, it's not something that was beyond your control. So just know that at this present time, since this is happening to so many people, you're going to find creditors that are really going to be open, you know, to help you. Next slide. So we're going to talk about the importance of credit. This is my passion. And I guess because I have seen so many people miss out on so much because they've had poor credit. So I just want to give you an example here of what, what is the benefits of having uh, good credit. So I just took as an example that if someone had purchased an uh, automobile for um, a five-year note or 60 months, and they fi financed $24,000. Well, the person who has poor credit, their interest rate is going to be 13.5%, and their monthly payment will be $559.14. Now, the person who has good credit, their interest rate is going to be 3.24%. So we're looking at 10% difference in that interest rate. Their monthly payment is $439.24. So over a five-year period, that is a savings of over $7,000. And the one thing that I hear over and over again is that people go to, uh, to the auto dealer and the auto dealer tells them, well, we can give you this payment and they'll say, oh, yeah, that's, that's good. I, I like that payment. You know, they're so excited about the payment, <clears throat> but the payment is not as, as, as important as the interest rate. And you can see by this example that a person who had a good credit score and had a 3.24% interest rate, interest rate 10% uh, less, uh, lower, and then they had a savings of worth $7,000. And do you know now, everybody wants to see your credit school. If you apply for uh, your utilities, try to get utilities, a cell phone, uh, insurance, everybody's looking at um, your credit score. And that can make a difference, especially when it comes to your cell phones and utilities and things like that, cable. You're looking at the, um, uh, with the cable, 
uh, lower deposits if you have a good credit score. Next, next up. Uh, so what is that credit score? The credit score is just really a three digit number uh, that the lenders use to evaluate the information that's in your credit report very quickly. Uh, say 40 or 50 years ago, we really didn't have that much, many people had credit. And when um, someone wanted to purchase something, it would take them several days or maybe a week before the creditor would come back and say, um, you've been approved. But now, uh, you know, you can get credit, you can go online and request credit and have it instantly come back and say that you're approved. So this is the system that we're in. We're, I tell everybody we are in the digital age right now. And by being in this digital age, you know, we can't go back to the way it used to be 40 or 50 years ago. I can remember when I was growing up, uh, my mother could uh, did all her sh uh, grocery shopping at the little store right on the corner. Uh, and so when she didn't have enough money, she'd just go down to the to the owner and tell him, said, look, I don't have much money, but can you let me buy things on credit? And so he would do it and, and he'd make a little note in his uh, ledger that, um, he make a little note in the ledger that, uh, Miss uh, Miss Chapman had gotten this amount of Miss um, Joyce. Miss mm -hmm. Joyce, one second, real quick. Can we all mute ourselves? I can't mute everyone because then I'll I'll mute Joyce. But someone's typing, and we can hear that. If you can just mute yourself. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> Somebody who has an iPhone, your name isn't up there, but iPhone, please mute yourself. Darian, mute yourself, please. Monica, mute yourself, please. We can't, we can't do it for you. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Okay, Joyce, we're sorry for the interruption. Oh, that's okay. So, uh, when my mother would go down to the store and they would give her the credit, that owner knew my mom and he knew her character. And he knew that if he let her get the groceries on credit, that she would come down as soon as possible and pay on that bill. Well, these days, people don't want to take that time. We don't have that personal uh, situation as we had before where everybody could uh, know you and understand that you're a person who really believes in paying their bills. So. In this digital age, whether we like it or not, you have to have credit. If, I mean, if you're gonna uh, be able to participate in everything that's going on as far as buying a house, buying a car, well, I take it back. Unless you're rich, you don't have to worry about the credit, but if um, you're not- you Actually, know, you actually Joyce, even if you're rich, you still gotta worry about credit. You can't well, buy a car unless you got a credit card. Well, that's true. That is true. But just as far, but see then, you know, if you got a debit card, you can give them the debit card at the, and, um, but for me, I did it one time. I gave a debit card and I didn't know they were going to hold uh, $400 out of my account, you know, when I did it. So, but, um, but just know that it is important that you have a, have good credit, that you have to have a good score. And credit scores usually range between 300 and 850. Uh, as many credit reports as I've reviewed, I've never seen an 850. Um, in fact, I'll use a credit simulator sometimes just to see you know, how high I can get my score and, uh, and other people's scores. And the most I've usually seen is about 830, 830. But if your score is over 680, that's a good score, good score. So next slide. So I just want to talk about the areas that are included in the credit score. And this is real important. It's five areas. We're looking at payment history, which represents 35% of the credit score, the amounts that are owed on the balances of your credit cards. So that is 30% of your credit score. Your length of credit history, how long you had credit is 15%. If you apply for new credit, that accounts for 10% of your credit score and the types of credit used 
uh, accounts for 10%. So if you have a car loan, credit cards, um, home loan, those th things will count for 10%. So which makes a total of 100%. Next slide. So what's in this payment history? And I want you to realize payment history is 35%, more than a third of your credit score. And payment history is gonna look at all your payments that you've made on time, you know, all on-time payments, any kind of derogatory payments that you've had, like late payments. So if you're 30 days late uh, on a credit card, um, charge off, a charge off happens when uh, you have a credit card and after six months, you do not make any payments. And since you have not made any payments, then the um, company, uh, the lender will write that off. That's what a charge off is. It means that lender has written that account off their books because it was uncollectible. And once they write that off their books as uncollectible, then they usually will do one of three things. They will either send that account to their own de uh, collections department uh, within their company, or they will contract with a company uh, to see if they can collect. And thirdly, they will sell that collection. So those collections are companies that are trying to collect from that original account that you had uh, that you did not pay. Then at chapter seven and chapter 13 bankruptcies, when you find out that you just have too much uh, financial obligations that you can, cannot take care of, you can go to court and you can file the chapter seven, which wipes everything out and chapter 13, in which you will try to make some kind of monthly payment agreement. So all of those are the main things that will appear on your in the payment history. Now, credit accounts, which um, are 30 days late, any especially recent 30 days late will cause your credit score to decrease. Uh, decrease. In fact, I've seen just one 30 day late payment, uh, see a drop of 30 to 40 points in your credit score. So that means that's just how important payment history is, is making sure you know, that you pay everything on time. But the good thing is that delinquent credit only remains on your credit report for seven years from the date of delinquency. So if your account, if you were reviewing your credit report and you saw an account that was 10 years, uh, happened 10 years ago, all you have to do is send a dispute to the credit bureau and they'll take it off. I mean, that is just super, super easy. And it's seven years from the date of delinquency. So if you had a collection company who had the had purchased the account, the account, and then they sold it to another collection company, so you had three of collections from that same original charge off, they will all be, uh, be removed from your credit report. Uh, the basketball. Huh? Seven years after the from the date of original delinquency. So they don't stay on your credit report forever. Um, the only thing that stays longer is a chapter seven bankruptcy. It's gonna stay on 10 years from the date of filing. And the chapter 13 is also just seven years from the date of filing. But just know that when something is removed from your credit report, don't get too excited because it's off the credit report. You know, the credit report, it says, when it comes off after seven years, it said it can never harm you any longer from being able to obtain a good credit. But those creditors, those collection of companies, they can call you for the rest of your life. You know, they can continue to call you. So uh, just because it's removed from the credit report does not say that you no longer owe that debt. You still will owe that debt. It's just that it cannot harm you uh, anymore after the seven years. So payment history, I'm gonna keep saying this, payment history, 35% of your credit score, you've got to have good payment history. Next slide. So the next is your debt. And under this uh, section, they're looking at the balance of your, of your credit card to this credit limit. So, um, it's gonna represent 30% of your score. So if you um, have a credit card and you're like, 
Well, they gave me a thousand dollars. I've got a thousand dollars I can go buy something with. Well, let me just let you know that uh, you don't want to spend up to the thousand dollars because that's like maxing out the your credit report. I mean, your credit card, and that is going to hurt you. You know, it's funny to me that they allow you to have the debt. They want to make sure that you have a credit card and they want to see how you use it. It represents 30% of your credit score, but basically they want you to always keep the balance low. So a low balance is going to increase your credit score. High balances decrease your credit score, even if you have good payment history. Joyce. Mm hmm Excuse me, I was about to type a response to a question. Do you mind if they ask questions as we go, or would you prefer that they hold the questions to the end? Uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll have questions right after I finish uh, this one section, and then I'll have uh, another questions. But I'll say any questions. OK. OK. But they can put it in the, in the chat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, so keep in mind, payment history, 35%. If you, had a if you have a credit card and you keep the balance low, it's 30%. So you're looking at 65% of your credit score. So if you uh, pay on time and don't use a lot of credit, you know, keep those balances low, uh, then you will have good credit. Now, this is the funny thing. I have a lot of people who tell me, they say, you know, I don't want a credit card. I don't like credit. You know, I wouldn't be bought. I have used credit before, it never worked with me. Well, let me just tell you, if you wanna see a good credit score, you're gonna to have to have a credit card because it represents 30% of your score. So your score will never increase very high if you don't have um, any credit card usage. Okay, any questions? Tina, you wanna ask that question or you want me to read it? Tina wanted to know what's the difference. Huh? Read it. Tina wants to know what's the difference between chapter seven and thirteen. You know, in a chapter seven, you go in, your attorney will go into court with you and you tell them that you there's no way in the world that you can pay this back. And they'll wipe out all the debt so you would not owe anyone. Uh, on a chapter 13. Uh, you go into court with your uh, attorney and they look at what how much income you have right now and they make a payment plan with you. So you would not pay back the full amount, but they would uh, negotiate uh, payments uh, on uh, balances on each one and you'll have to pay it back over three, five year period, whatever the court, <clears throat> whatever court decision is made. Well, Joyce, what would determine it? Let's just say that um, I don't want to pay it back. I want to do a, a chapter seven. Is it my choice to do a seven? Or if I, if the court, you know, if I do have a little money, is the court going to make me do a 13? Well, in the past, you could choose, but, you know, they made some changes to the law. And so now it's basically, it's based on you know, your income and wait, baby, wait. Wait. Somebody, somebody, hey, hey, you guys, please mute yourselves if you're not, if you're not asking a question, please. We can't mute you. So we're asking you to do that. Love, L, mute yourself. I'm not sure you were the one that was a noise coming from you, but I see that you're not muted. But the next question is from Sydney. Is it true that you don't have to pay for the collection judgment on your credit report? Okay. A collection is different from a judgment. A judgment, you have been taken to court to pay. A collection, you don't necessarily have to pay for, for it if it's showing on your credit report, but uh, after seven years, it will come off. But they can contact you for the rest of your life trying to collect on that debt. On a judgment, you've been taken to court, and so you're gonna to have to uh, go to the attorney who handled that judgment and work with that attorney um, and uh, go back to court to get that all straightened out. 
Now you say uh, the collection, if there's a collection, they can buy, it's gonna fall off your credit report in seven years, but they can bother you for the rest of your life. Right. Under what circumstances can you stop them from bothering you for the rest of your life? Well, there is a, uh, a fair credit reporting, no, not fair credit, um, anyway, there's a federal law. Cease and desist? Huh? Would that work? Yeah, that's, that's part of the federal law that says that you can send them a, send that collection company a letter telling them not to contact you anymore. And, um, and they're not supposed to. So they won't contact, but you still owe the debt. Right. You know, it, it stops them from contacting you, but you still owe the debt. So just know that a judgment is very different from a collection. A collection can turn into a judgment. You know, if the uh, collection agency decides to take you to court, but normally, uh, that collection is um, something that is probably where you didn't pay, and uh, it will come off the credit report in seven years. Judgments are no longer, as of last year, judgments are no longer um, uh, included on your credit report. Now it's eight. Oh. I'm sorry, he was saying something. I was, but you can go ahead. Galaxy A20 wants to know what if you do a settlement with the collection agency? Uh, you can settle with the collection agencies. That's not a problem. But you want to be very careful how you do that. Uh, because if you uh, start to work with the collection agency and you ask them to, um, you're, you're thinking that if you, work with the collection agency is going to give you a positive remark or something uh, on your credit report. Necessarily, it will not. Um, the best way is to see if you can negotiate with that company to see if they can remove it from your credit report. Um, you won't be able to do that with the original creditor because they already have your signature where you made that um, for that account. But if that, if that um, account was sold to a collection agency, you can negotiate with them. I personally think that um, you don't want to make payment arrangements with them because keep in mind, if you make payment arrangements with them and you can't keep those payment arrangements, then you have made a new uh, delinquent account and that seven year period on that new delinquent account will start over. Um, so you have to be very careful. Also in certain states, um, if you started new payment arrangements, um, like in Texas, it's four years after your last payment, you don't have to worry about being taken to court. So if you start making payment arrangements, say in five years, you know, after you had that debt for five years with the collection agency, um, and you don't make those payments, they can take you to court. So you have to be very careful when it comes to negotiating um, with them. My, um, one of the uh, guys that worked with me as far as uh, at Dallas County is Chris Ebert, and he has a company, Expert Credit. And um, on his website, and I should have brought that in, had that with me. On his website, he gives you a free videos on how to, um, how to negotiate. Let's see, I don't see it here. But anyway, yes, expert credit repair. Just the X and then P-E-R-T credit repair. You should be able to find that on the internet. And um, they've got, uh, he does, uh, uh, has a law firm and they do the credit repair. I do not believe in credit repair. Um, but if you wanted to do it yourself, he has a, he's a credit repair company. But he also has on that website a lot of free information about credit and a really good video and forms on how to negotiate with collection agencies. So I think that would be real good for you. You said expert. Uh, X, credit. Expert. It's an X with P E R T, expert. Uh -huh, credit. What else was it? 
it's an expert credit repair. This expert credit repair. And his name is what? Chris Ebert. Oh, Ebert, E B E R T? Uh huh. I just put it in the chat for y'all. And we have another question, Joyce. Okay. Is it true that the collection agency purchases the debt from the original lender for a fraction of the original debt? And that's from uh, Sebastian. Yes. <laughs> uh, the original creditor says, okay, I, I'm not going to get any payment from this person. So instead of me trying to keep it and collect, I just want to get rid of it. And so they sell it for a fraction of the amount. So they can sell it to that first collection agency and that first collection agency, if they cannot get any payment from you, then they will sell it for a fraction of the amount to somebody else. And it can be that one debt that you didn't pay uh, can be sold three or four times and each time it shows up on your credit report as a delinquent account. Now keep in mind, you can only have the original creditor plus one other company collecting at the, at the same time. So you can dispute all those other ones um, that were older, you know, than the most recent one off the credit report with no problem. They should take it off, but they won't take it off because account, uh, um, it would cost them money to do so. So they wait for you to dispute those collections. I have a question. Mm -hmm. what, um, what kind of accounts are um, that they can uh, garnish your wages? I know that they can garnish your wages on, um, you know, child support and IRS. Yeah, RIS. I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think they can garnish your. Well, you know, it might it might be a different. Um, let's see. Yeah, I know child support. And I know IRS. They can garnish. I don't think that they can garnish on uh, school loans. I think they usually take the school loans out of your income tax refund. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have another question from okay. Darian. Okay, last one. After yeah. credit judgment, are you eligible for credit again? Uh, judgments are kind of funny um, because judgments can stay on the credit report for 10 years and the um, whoever filed the judgment, they can go back into court and file that judgment again. So uh, seven years, I can't remember right at the offhand, seven years or 10 years. So they can file the, a judgment's been filed against you. Uh, you don't make any kind of arrangements as far as um, a payment with it. You know, if they wanna come back and refile that judgment, they can. Now the good thing, is that last year they took the judgments off the credit report. So unless you're getting a mortgage loan, if you're just getting a, a credit a credit card, it's not gonna show up on your credit report. So it's not gonna affect you trying to get new credit, but it will affect you if you're trying to get a mortgage loan because they're gonna do a public search whereas the credit card companies will just do uh, whatever's on the credit card, I mean a credit report. Okay, so so just again, uh, payment history, 35%, that balance to the credit limit is 30%, 65% of your credit history is based on those two things. So now we're looking at the length of your credit history and just how long have you had credit? You know, when have you, uh, uh, when did you first apply for credit? You know, have you had credit for five years, 10 years, 15 years? Um, I've worked with um, a vice president for the company to develop the credit score for about a year. I never could get him to tell me the length that would you could see an improvement in your credit score. And basically, just looking at tons of credit reports, it seems like after you've had credit for about five years, you can start to see um, an in increase in your score. So the longer your credit history, the higher the score, short credit history, the lower the score. Now, also remember, and this is real important, that even if you had a delinquent account, say you had a delinquent account in 2015, and all your other credit is new credit. So if you went in to say, well, okay, I've got that, all my 
credit I've had in the, in the past two years is good. And so I've got this one delinquent account. You know, it was five years ago. It's not really hurting anything. I think I'm going to see if I can get it taken off. Well, if you dispute it to have it taken off, and it is taken off, or you make payment arrangements to have it removed with the collection agency, now your five-year credit history has been dropped to a two-year credit history. So you might see a slight decrease in your credit score from that. I'm Joyce, I just, I just wanted to add that um, uh, your paycheck can be garnished for student, federal student loans. Oh, we can't, good, okay. Mm -hmm. And um, so next slide, okay. So new credit. <clears throat> So every time you apply for a lot of new credit, it's a red score, I mean, a red flag with um, the credit reporting agencies basically is saying that you're broke. You might, you might be trying to uh, spend more money than uh, you really should. should. So, uh, and then when you open up too many accounts, um, that is a red flag. So opening too many accounts, applying for too much, a new credit is going to lower your credit score. Next. And the mix of credit. Now, um, any, type of a, any type of loan or credit card that you have applied for, uh, to, for your credit, the lender, I mean, the uh, credit score is looking at that to see if you can manage credit with a lot of different types of uh, accounts. Uh, so they're looking at the revolving credit, they're looking at the mortgage loan, looking at all the loans and bank loans. Now, one thing I have noticed is that revolving credit, it represents 30% of your score. And if you don't have any revolving credit cards in that mix, you are gonna see a lower credit score. Next slide. And before you, any other, any other questions? Oh, good question. How many is too many accounts, especially if you have student loans? Student loans, I think, are just wonderful because every time you apply for a student loan each semester, then that shows a separate account. So you may be paying the student loan uh, agency a um, uh, one making one payment but on your credit report you might have five or six student loans well if you're paying on time and you don't have any delinquencies uh, even though you're making one payment um, you're going to have uh, say you have five uh, student loans so now you have five lines of good credit history uh, so that's not too many uh, to have, but five lines of good payment history. Now, the other opposite is that if you're not making those payments on time, then you're going to have five lines of negative uh, payment history. But you know, the one good thing about having a school loan is that they will work with you. So you can contact the student loan agency and once you've had good payment history for a year, uh, all that delinquent and bad credit you know, that you had from a uh, non-payment will actually uh, be taken off your credit. Now, why anybody else won't do that? <laughs> but the government will allow them to do that, so. Okay, so I went over those five sections on uh, areas of, that include the credit score because the problem with most people is when they think about wanting to improve their credit, they think they have to contact a credit repair company to help them. And they really don't. I mean, not unless you're just scared to pick up the phone and call a creditor or something like that. Because the knowledge that they have is all, a lot of the, a lot of the um, credit repair companies, all they do is just to see how much can I dispute? Can I dispute? Can I dispute? And that can actually hurt you uh, because once an account has been disputed, then it's no longer included in uh, the credit score. 
And so they will just dispute things and um, it really won't make any difference in the score. And I've seen this over and over again. You know, people came into my office, you know, Miss Brown, I'm trying to find out what I need to do. Um, everything's been disputed, but my score is still low. Well, it was still, you know, you disputed everything, but you didn't have any good payment history on your credit report. Had people come in my office, Miss Brown, which one of these uh, collection accounts do I need to get taken off? How can I, which one should I get uh, disputed? And I look at the credit report and it's not anything to do with the collections because the collections are real old because once those collections um, get old five years or more, then they have very low impact on your score unless you don't have any good payment history. And so when I look at those credit reports, you know, the reason the credit score is low is because they have too much debt. That credit limit, I mean, the balance to the credit limit on the credit cards are too high. So you don't really need a credit repair company to help you. I always say you handle the easy stuff and let the credit repair companies handle the hard stuff. Because the easy stuff is the credit score tells you. The credit score is going to tell you why your score is low. And they have what they call reasons or factors that are included with the score. So everybody just looks at the number. The number is important, but you need to go down and look at those four or five reasons that they give you why the score is low. And so I just gave you a few examples that you might see. So very first one, if you have any type of collections or charge-offs on your credit report, you'll see serious delinquency public record, record or collection file. That is always going to be the number one if you have a lot of those. But just move down to the second one because it'll tell you the reason why they put that first one there. And it will tell you if you had too many accounts that had a, uh, that had a delinquency. It'll tell you if the month since the most recent delinquency is too short. So you know if you see those reasons, then you know you're going to have to work to see if um, um, Hold that question, I'll get right back to it. <laughs> so, um, so just know that it's gonna tell you what you need to do in order to raise your score. So if you see the number of accounts with delinquency, you know, then that means that you've got too many accounts with delinquency and you're gonna have to get some accounts with a good payment history. If you see months since most recent delinquency is too short, Whatever that delinquency was, if it was a 30-day late payment, then you know that you're going to have to um, make sure you make all your payments you know, on time. So it's telling you everything that you have to do in order to improve your credit uh, score in these reasons and factors. So uh, proportion of balances to credit limits or revolving accounts is too high. So if, you, uh, if your balances are, content, are very high on the um, to your credit limit, you know, then your score is going to be low. You might see a lot of places will tell you to keep it below 30%, but um, your, your FICO, um, um, I forgot the name they call them, but FICO says that um, their persons with the highest credit score usually has a balance of 10% or, or less. So, um, you want to keep those balances as low as possible. Uh, not enough revolving debt. You know, those people who tell me they don't like credit uh, cards, you're going to have to have it because it's going to tell you right there uh, why your score is low. Uh, length of time accounts have been established. If you just establish any accounts, it's going to tell you. Um, you know, that's where your problem is. If you've had too many inquiries, it's going to tell you. So they've got a long list of, but these are the ones that I normally would see. And it's just telling you, these are the things that are having the worst impact on your credit uh, score. And these are the things that you need to work on to improve. So let's go by that question. She had a good question that popped up. You've got a couple down here, a couple okay. questions. Uh, one, Doris says, how many is too many accounts, especially if you have student loans? You can have a ton of accounts on your credit report as long as they're good payment 
good uh, paying accounts. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, I've had people come in with a lot of accounts. And the next one, I'm sorry, go ahead. Jay said, how does becoming an authorized user help raise score? <clears throat> if you, you know, this is one thing that floats around all the time about uh, you can raise your score by being an authorized user on someone else's account. Very first thing you need to make sure is that person has good payment history. You don't want to be an authorized user on someone else's credit and they don't pay very well because it's not, not going to help you. Uh, the second thing you have to be very careful of when you're going to be an uh, authorized user is that you don't use too many accounts so it raises your, the amount of debt that you have. So you take on someone's credit, um, uh, become an authorized user on someone's credit card and they have a, um, a large balance with a large monthly payment. Say they've got a, a $20,000 credit card and, and uh, they've used up $10,000 and that monthly payment is $400 a month. Well, uh, it might improve your credit score, but if we start looking at uh, trying to get approved by the lender, they're going to look and say, oh, uh, they already got a 400, they got a good credit score, but they already got a $400 monthly payment. So uh, I don't think they can afford, you know, so it can help you in a lot of ways, but I prefer that you work and see if you can um, get your own score up, not unless you just had to, but. Next, next question from Maxine is, what is the title of your book? Maxine, look right down that big old screen. Ain't that beautiful? It's wonderful. I did it, I, it, it, That popped up right after I asked that question. <laughs> <laughs> and Tina said, when do you get, when you get married, is credit score and report combined? Tina, you get married? It's never combined. Everybody has their own indi individual file. Now, if you apply for a mortgage loan, they're going to look because, well, especially in Texas, the community property state, they're going to look at both credit reports. Uh, but no, the, you know, if you're applying, I guess applying for a mortgage loan, but each file is separate. Okay, Joyce, so your book, your book, credit repair, credit mortgage repair. loan. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Credit repair for mortgage loan approval. Um, I worked at, I was a mortgage loan officer for 10 years before I became a, um, a counselor and housing officer and then manager for Dallas County. And the one thing that oh, don't wait, don't, you know what she's been she's being so modest she was not a manager she was a director or something like that <laughs> she was big time y'all she's big time okay okay thank you Liz <laughs> but the thing that bothered me was that um, and keep in mind that Dallas County we were working with low to moderate income and one of the things that bothered me is so many people came in with such bad credit and they, they uh, missed out on so many opportunities. When the market crashed and there were so many homes on the market that had um, uh, dropped in price and the interest rate were low, I mean, we would have in our classes, you know, 60 people and maybe only five of those 60 people would be able to purchase a home because the credit was good. So, um, you know, I was like, you know, somehow we've got to let everybody know credit is important, you know, and that's why I wrote the book. I'm, I'm on my second book. I hopefully I'll have it finished, you know, by the end of this month. Um, Cause I'm expanding a little bit more on the dispute section in the book. And I'm also um, uh, giving a little bit more detail, you know, than that did at first, but I'm trying to still keep it simple, you know, because I don't want, want it, be anything that it takes you forever to read and you wouldn't want to read it. But, um, but I did went in today and I lowered the price. It was $19.99 and I lowered the price to $12.99. And they said it would be 
it would show up, um, I think, on a Saturday. It would show up on Saturday. But I'm lowering the price on that book. I'm lowering the price on that book because a new book is going to be coming out. But what, where, where, where do they go to buy it? Amazon. Oh, I thought everybody knew Amazon. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, but like I said, this is my passion. You know, I just want to see people improve their credits because there's so much benefit from having good credit. And a lot of times we don't know. And, um, and I think that uh, we need to know. We need to know. Like I said, we had so many people who could. And just right now, you know, our interest rates are at the lowest they've ever been in history. Since what, the, what somebody was saying way back when. <laughs> I know before I was born. Uh, and you don't see that many people with the good credit that they can take advantage of it, of being able to purchase a house. And to me, home ownership is also very important. You know, because uh, when you think about uh, the equity buildup you can have in a home and what it will do for you, uh, and I think a lot of people sometimes miss miss that out. But uh, I was trying to think. I mean, these were some good questions that kind of covered everything that you know I was thinking about. So I can't think of anything else. Not unless anybody else has any other any other questions. Latina said it was great. She loved it. She was educated. Latina, I still want to know when you get married. <laughs> you want to officiate for her? No, ma'am. <laughs> not, not at all. Just curious. Uh, okay, okay. I was wondering. I was wondering. Mm -hmm. um, talking about officiating, uh, so, so, Joyce, I think you'd be good at officiating weddings. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. I don't think oh. I would do that. Okay, well, awesome. Are you gonna do um are you gonna do a giveaway? I do. I have two books. All right. So we're gonna put the number in the chat. And it's going to be between the number uh, 1 and 23, if you could put it in the chat. I almost just typed in 25 just to be messy. <laughs> Well, you would have lost. <laughs> Joyce won't let me play. You know, she'll yell at me, so I, I can't. <laughs> I can't have that. All right, let's see, let's see. Has everyone put their number in that's playing? Okay, so the number was 19, so the closest would be Brenda with 20. <laughs> all right so we have two so we're going to do it one more time same thing one between one and 23 oh it came up fast Daphne, you wanted to make sure uh, we saw that number too. Because guess what? The number was one. <laughs> so Daphne won the second book. So you guys want to, um, Daphne, who won the first? Uh, Brenda. Yes. So you'll want to get, how are we going to get their information? If they can send me, if they can send me in the chat, just uh, direct to me their address and I can forward it on to Miss Joyce. That would be much quicker than I was last time, Miss Joyce. Okay. <laughs> Don't believe it. I promise I will. But I just want to thank everyone for 
for attending. This was a good group. It was, we yeah. Had, and a lot of good questions. And uh, hopefully I can do this again. Uh, but thank you for showing up. And thank you for being, uh, giving me the attention. I really, 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 really do appreciate it. And thank you to my family that showed up. Yay! <laughs> hey, well, Joyce, let me ask you. You said you're going to have your new book ready uh, by the end of the month? Well, I'm going to have it fit, completed, and we'll see how long it takes for me to get it. Uh, well, when, when, and you said you're expanding on um, disputes. Right. Uh -huh. So after you get it published, would you like to come back and focus on your changes to the book? Yeah, I think if I came back the second time, I'd like to talk more about the disputes uh, because that is where... Most people, when they look at their credit report and they, where they have never ever paid any attention to uh, credit and they have all these collections and they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So that is where, you know, what I'd probably like to come back next time and talk more about is if you have outstanding collections uh, on your credit report, judgments, well, judgments don't show up anymore, but. Uh, well, they don't, like you said, they don't show up anymore. But they're still there. So it's, I think it might still be worthy of um, touching on it uh, only because if someone is going to try and buy a house and they have judgments, you know, they think, well, it don't show up. Well, it doesn't show up on your credit report, but it's going to show up in a deeper review of credit if you're looking to purchase a home. Right. So that's just my thought that you may want to uh, still just give, give, Okay. Give us some information on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. There's a question. Um, Mike asked, "What's the difference between opt in and opt out?" Okay, opt in and opt out is if you want to receive any um, any um, uh, credit. Uh, what is it when you get the letter in the mail? They say you've been approved. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so, if you don't want to receive anything. Uh, you can opt out. If you want to receive, uh, you can opt in. Uh, the only thing is that keep in mind that when you receive those letters, those companies have sent a profile to the type of person they're trying to give credit to, to Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, the three uh, uh, major credit reporting agencies. So they just sent that in to them. And so they send uh, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion will send that creditor the names and addresses. So they don't really know what your credit score is. And so uh, you think, oh, I'm doing pretty good now. I'm getting all of these letters and they're going to, you know, they want to give me credit. But keep in mind, our credit system has changed so that all they're looking at, once they pull your credit report, they're going to give you credit and you're going to give you an interest rate and um, credit limit based on that score. Right. So you, they all have in that letter up to uh, $10,000. And then they look at your credit score and they only give you 500. You know, I thought I was going to get $10,000. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't mean that you're getting anything. Uh, you're just, uh, they just reviewed, asked them the credit uh, report. Uh, reporting agencies to send them a list of names and addresses of those people that fit per, uh, profile. And if you don't want those letters to come, then you just notify the uh, credit reporting agencies that you want to opt out and you're out. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ms. Brindai sent you a private message that you could give me your last name so I can uh, forward that on. And are there any other questions? And if they have any, if anybody has any questions, you can send them to mjoycebrown at gmail.com. mjoycebrown at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, Miss Joyce, again, this was amazing. And this time we recorded it. So. Oh, you did? <laughs> yes, we will send it to you as well as be posting it on our Facebook page as well as our YouTube channel. So anyone that missed it will definitely get to see a replay of it. 
This was, uh, like I said, amazing. Um, we do uh, small business spotlights every Wednesday. So if anyone on here has a small business or knows someone that has a small business, um, would like to use this platform to talk about what they do, you know, support, we're trying to support as many small, small businesses as possible. So please give me, um, give me a shout. I'll put my email in the chat for you to do that. Um, also, EC Head, no, uh, uh, I'm sorry, EC Head Consulting does notary training. And so we have a class on this Saturday, notary one-on-one. -on -one. We still have some spots available. So if you're interested in being a notary, uh, this would be where you would start. You have to know the basics. So this is going to go over the laws. Um, if you follow our Facebook page, I posted a few articles that just caught my attention just in the past week alone about notaries getting sued. So, you know, you want to, I mean, it's not, not saying that you won't get sued because you may very well get sued, but if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you're doing right, then when you go to court, you're fine. You know, you won't have any issues. So that's, that's what this class is about, is talking about the do's and the don'ts of what you can and cannot do as a notary, because some people don't know. I'm not going to say that everyone's out there to get you. They just may not know that that's not something that that's allowed for us to do. So it's um, up to us to protect our seal at all costs. Also, the next class is a loan signing agent class, which is workshop one, which is that following week. So if you're interested in being a loan signing agent, that will be the class for you. And then I, when I came in late, I heard her talking uh, about the advanced class on steroids. I heard something about that. So that one follows. Uh, so the next, next three weeks, get in, get in. Um, I do like to tell everyone that's thinking about this is that uh, notary publics are an essential employee. So they, they never stopped working this whole time we've been in quarantine. You know, the money kept coming. So if you know someone that's been laid off or you yourself have been laid off because of quarantine, this is maybe a profession that you might want to get into. Because like I said, and I want to say it's gotten busier. I know I just do the general notary and I, I get, I've been out every day for the last two weeks and I just do general work. And so the loan signing, which um, my mom Liz Head does, she stays busy. And she, you know, there's this platform, Snapdocs. She gets off of it and they just call her on the phone. You're not on Snapdocs. Where you at? Where you at? We need you. <laughs> so, again, this is, this is a career that, you know, you will continue to work on in a pandemic because people are still buying houses. You know, they'll be refinancing houses. So, this is something that you can secure your future with and also make some money doing it. So, uh Okay, Miss Maxine saying that she would like to. Okay, so um, I'm gonna send. I'm gonna put my uh, email address because I what I've noticed is that once we in the in the Zoom, the chats go away. So if you could send me all that, Maxine, in an email, and I'm putting my email right here. And let me just say for those of you who um, want to become already or you're already signing. Uh, agents and you want to get out there now is an opportune time I just caution everybody if you're gonna go out there make sure you're wearing your mask make sure you're you're protecting yourself because this little old bug is no joke so you want to make sure that you're protecting yourself and then if the people who uh, you're working with if they do not want to wear a mask, then you give it back to the hiring company. You let somebody else go do it because that hundred dollars ain't worth you getting sick. So, you know, it's, but it's kind of like, we've got to get back to some kind of normalcy. Uh, I just said this on a video earlier. So now it's like, did I just say, am I repeating myself? But I am, and it's worth repeating. Whereas we've got to get back to some kind of normalcy because we don't know how long we're going to be in this pandemic. So if you, if, and the work is there, if you are comfortable going out there to get that work, just make sure when you get it, you, you, you're, you've been trained and you're doing it the right way. You provi provide that customer service. You don't try to do any of this crazy stuff that they've got going where it's door dashing, dropping the documents and, you know, and you, you, the people take them in and then, they sign and then hand them back to you. Do not do that. You've just violated your, your commission because you did not see anybody sign. Do not, if you cannot do this business without 
entertaining all of the, the crisis management procedures that have been put in place, then maybe this isn't the time for you. Maybe this is not the time for you. But if you're interested, the money is there, y'all. I, I, it's just like, I need help. It's just like, please stop calling me. But I'm so blessed. I'm so grateful that the opportunity is here for me. You know, when you say enlarge my territory, you've got to be ready to step into that territory to handle it when God sends it your way. Uh, the other, Liz, mm -hmm. the other thing that, that I, I do for my signings, I always ask those uh, health screening questions. Yes, you must. You must ask those questions. And that questionnaire comes with most of the assignments now. Yeah. And, yeah. and if it does not, it behooves us to ask that question. I ask the question, Maxine, but I also, I also say when I'm confirming the appointment, I let them know that they must wear a mask. And I've only had one person to tell me, you know, to refuse to wear the mask. And I just gave it back to the title company. And I had another guy to tell me that, well, do you know there's 359 uh, billion people who don't have the virus? I said, and I intend to stay in there 359 billion. <laughs> so I ain't coming if you don't put a mask on. That, he, said, he said, I'll put a mask on. Right. There you go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Oh. Maisha, the Notary 101 is the first Saturday of every month, unless it falls on a holiday. So that would be the next one if you can't make the one on this Saturday. And somebody asked for my contact information. So let me, I gave it to that one person who asked, but let me just, I'm going to type it in the, um, in the chat real fast here it's my phone number and my email is now you guys know you can save the chat right i haven't seen how to save it so that oh, those oh i know how, i know how to save it but you know right. yeah three little dots yeah we we yeah Well, we're not going to, uh, uh, Maxine, thank you for that. But uh, we don't save the chat because okay. it takes up too much storage space. Yeah. Because we save the Zoom, the presentation itself. Yeah. And then anything that's in the chat, we talked about it in the Zoom presentation. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, it takes up too much storage on my, um, on my, uh, in my. Uh, Cloud. I understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, but anyway, and since she just said the chat's going to go away, but I just typed it in there in case everyone didn't see it. But my phone number is 817-584-3922. 817-584-3922. My email address is Liz, L-I-Z, head, H-E-A-D, at E as in Elizabeth, C as in Campbell, head, H-E-A-D, consulting.com. And my email for anyone that wants to do a small business spotlight on Wednesday is info at pretty, I-N, branding. So pretty and branding. Who's coming up next for, for the, the present Wednesday night presentation, Tamika? Uh, next Wednesday, it will be Regina Kennedy. Um, she's talking about her first year as a loan signing agent. And unfortunately, if you haven't already registered, it is sold out. It had 90 spots and they have all been filled. So, it, but we will record it. So if you didn't, are you one of the people that got to register, we will record it and we'll post it on Facebook the next day, as well as on our YouTube channel. And who's after Regina? Uh, that would be you. Live. <laughs> pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. 
<laughs> Live question and answers with Elizabeth Head. And you're going to be going over how to uh, travel, how to calculate travel fees as well for general notary work. And after that? After that, um, we have an open spot. Ooh. Yeah, we had we thought we had a, a you know someone there, but she kind of backed out on us. So it wasn't the prepaid, was it? No, it was uh, the funeral. That's what I mean. The funeral, uh, Christy. Oh, oh, I was thinking you talking about legal. Yeah. So I'm gonna reach out one more time, but I have someone in the chat that says she wants to uh, talk about her business, so she might fill in. Okay. 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 But what I was talking about just then when I said the prepaid, um, we don't like to talk about, you know, the end for us, right. but it's something that we definitely need to talk about. So I've invited, um, I have my, my pre prepaid arrangements with Mansfield Funeral Home. So I've asked her to come on and talk, you know, just do, uh, do a presentation on the importance of prepaid arrangements. Because you know when something happens, then everybody everybody is emotional, and you're spending emotionally, and you already you, your people are spending emotionally. You're dead. You don't need to spend all that money. So you don't have to be in a silver anyway. <laughs> Anybody got anything else? Looks like it's a go. Thank you, everyone. For Thank being. you for joining us, and we hope to see you either on class on Saturday or next Wednesday. Thank you, everybody. That was a great, great, great presentation. All right. Bye. Bye. Good Joyce, night. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And, and you'll talk to me about getting you on schedule. All right. I'll let you know when the book is finished and we're ready to roll. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Good. Thank you, Tamika. I appreciate you. Bye, Brenda. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, everybody.